PBR. Mark Twain once said, there are two types of speakers, those who get nervous and those who are liars. For millions, public speaking is the thing that holds them back from achieving their dreams and goals. But once you conquer it, you gain confidence and can be viewed as a leader. This evening, Rich will explain three small things you can do prior to your next speech that will help calm your nerves and relieve your stress. The title of this speech is The PBR Method. Please help me give a warm welcome to Rich Hopkins. What do you feel like right before you're about to give a speech? You know that feeling deep inside as you sit waiting to be introduced? If you're anything like me, you feel nervous, stressed, and anxious. In fact, let me read a couple comments that I got after my first speech at Toastmasters three years ago. Matt wrote to me and said, Rich, you seemed extremely nervous up there. Next time, bring a towel to wipe the sweat off your face. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Don't leave home without it. Norm wrote to me and said, Rich, you didn't come across as that confident. I bet you don't wear the pants in your family. <laughs> Thank you, Norm. <laughs> Those pants still don't fit. <laughs> but truth be told, I was extremely nervous and anxious before my first couple of speeches. We all seem to get that same anxious feeling right before our biggest challenges in life. Like before a job interview, before a big test, before a presentation at work. Or how about guys, right before you're about to ask that beautiful girl over there out on a date. Hey babe, <laughs> how you doing? Meet me tonight at Pachanga date. Don't be late. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, instead of feeling powerless, by a show of hands, how many people in here would like to feel powerful right before your biggest challenge in life? Excellent. This evening, you will learn three ways to erase stress from your life, especially right before a speech. I present to you the PBR way. The first way is P, which stands for posture. Now, do you smile, then you get happy? Or do you get happy first, and then you smile? Do you frown, and then get angry? Or do you get angry first, and then you frown? Amy Cuddy is a social psychologist, a former Harvard professor, and the author of the best-selling book, Presence. Now she argues that our nonverbals dictate the way we think and feel about ourselves. Our body controls our mind. If she is correct, and we do smile first and then get happy, I wonder, can we stand up straight with great posture and then feel powerful and confident? Before my first couple of speeches at Toastmasters, as I sat waiting to be introduced, I would often find myself with bad posture, hunching over. You see, that's what people do when they feel unsure of themselves. They make themselves smaller. But there's one very important thing you must do right before your next speech. Can I get a verbal? Power posing. Adopting the stances that are associated with power and confidence. Standing up straight with a great posture, shoulders pulled back, chest out, stomach sucked in, wide stance, and your hands are on your hips. All right, Ted, yes, everyone should get up. Please, let's give it a try. So we're gonna stand up straight with great posture first, pull your shoulders back, Lift your chest, suck in your stomach. Your stance should be at least shoulder width apart. And finally, 
your hands around your hips. It has been scientifically proven that a two minute power pose will increase your testosterone by 20% and decrease your cortisol level by 25%. Thank you. You guys go ahead and sit. So that's exactly what I started to do. About five minutes before my speech, I would get up. I would go to the bathroom. Then I would lock the door. I would look at myself in the mirror, and then I would strike a power pose. And I would do it for two minutes. Then I'd feel that kind of surge, a test running through my body. Then I knew I'd be ready to come out and rock that stage. So adopting this simple two-minute power pose changed my internal state from stress to confidence. Adopting this simple two-minute power pose turned my stage fright into stage presence. The second way is B, which stands for breathing. You have the ability to erase stress from your life by simply controlling the way you breathe. Have you ever noticed the way you breathe when you feel stressed, nervous, or anxious? You breathe way too fast, too shallow. And on the other hand, have you noticed the way you breathe when you feel safe, calm, and confident? You will notice you breathe much slower and more consistent. Your brain has learned to associate fast, quick breathing with stress and slow, rhythmic breathing, called belly breathing, with safety and confidence. Before my first couple speeches here at Toastmasters, as I sat waiting to be introduced, I would often find myself with that posture, and I would also be breathing way too fast. But then I started to take deep belly breaths. I would inhale through my nose, push my stomach or diaphragm out, then exhale through my mouth, pull my stomach back in. So if you sit up straight in your chair and put your hand on your stomach, close your mouth, now inhale through your nose, push your stomach out like you're blowing up a small balloon. Now exhale through your mouth. Then pull your stomach in. I use the 16 second breath throughout the day now, where I inhale for four seconds, I hold it for four seconds, I exhale for four seconds and then I hold it again for four seconds. Then I repeat the process. Adopting that simple breathing technique, it turned my internal state from stress to a more calm, controlled confidence. Adopting that simple breathing technique turned my stage fright into a stage presence. The third and final way is R. What makes us suffer in life, I believe, is our thoughts. According to Tony Robbins, in order to have a successful, blissful life, you must learn to find the beauty in everything that happens to you, especially the bad times. You have the ability to reframe everything in your life as a positive. It's a conscious choice that I make each and every day because I choose how I interpret the world around me and all the experiences that I have. I tend to see challenges as exciting and an opportunity for growth. You can become a more bolder, a more effective, and a more confident version of yourself by reframing stress 